Hello Paper Crafters, this is Jane Fires, Fun Stamper's Journey, Independent Coach number 151. And today I'm going to show you how to do this particular card here. And it is what we call double embossed. And then I used pan pastels on it. Now, one of the things I've talked about before are our pan pastels, but I've never showed you how they come. This is how they come when you order them. Pan pastels, this happens to be the Rich Sorbet kit. Of course, it says fragile on it because you don't want the post office and the people dropping these. It comes all wrapped up. It comes in a case like this. And then you can pull it out like this. You can see your colors here. These tools come with it. You have two of your little um, ends that go on your tool here. Then you get one of what I call the medium and one of the large sponges. And this is what you can use to uh, Take your color from your palette here onto your card. Now, today I'm going to use our daubers instead, but I wanted to show you how the kit comes, and this is exactly how it comes. You can store them in here, or you can screw them together. The center one always has lid on it, okay, and you'll see that in a minute because I'm the set that I'm going to use. I'm not using this particular set. I'm using Rich Sorbet, but this is how they come so that you can see that they're well wrapped, they're well taken care of, we're going to lay this stuff aside, and then I'll show you some of the other things. <clears throat> One of the other things that I used, of course, is our paper trimmer, our new scoreboard I used, and these we can set aside. I've already used all of those. The colors today that we're going to use are pumpkin bread cardstock. And this is our base, and then our one a liner piece. White, and our whipped cream. And this is what we're actually going to emboss on today, is our white. And then we're using our embossing folder, Changing Seasons. And I don't know if you can see it, but you will once we've used it. And then we're using two stamp sets. We're using Autumn Days. And this set has been in for a long time. In fact, this is one of my very first sets that I bought. So you're going to notice that when I use my leaf today, there are no uh, markings on the back. And that's why, because when Fun Stampers first started, we didn't have the labels on the back. So this is Autumn uh, Days. It's still available, and I love the leaf set. Then I'm also using one of our brand new ones that came out this year entitled Remarkable You, and they have all these fun words, thinking of you, smile every day, stay, think, be positive, you are remarkable, wonderful you, for you, just for you, be the best version of you, and it's a good day for a good day. And so out of this particular stamp set, we are going to use Be the Best Version of You. Then our card stocks. Our base is the pumpkin bread, and of course it's four and a quarter by eleven, folded in half to make your card of five and a half by four and a quarter. <clears throat> and then the embossing ones, our first white one is four by five and a quarter. Our next one embossed is two and three fourths by four. The one we're going to do our words and our leaves on are two by three and a quarter. And of course, we have one more pumpkin bread, and it's two and seven eighths by four and an eighth. And it's the one that will be under this one once we're done embossing. So for right now, I'm going to lay these aside, and I'm going to take a glue dot. Now, you can also use our tape runner, um, because this is going to come apart. But your glue dot will come off. So I'm just going to stick my glue dot on. And then in my card here, this is the top layer, my first layer, which is four by five and a quarter. I'm going to center my smaller white one. Line it up where I want it. Just tap it down. 
Now it's going to go together in my changing seasons. And my friend Deb showed me how to do this particular technique. So I'm going to lay it in here and get it lined up so that I know it's straight. And close it down. And then I'm bringing over my Platinum 6. And remember our Platinum 6 are our, is our newest die machine and of course it folds up. And it's only 7 pounds so it's not heavy at all. And it stores very easily. And remember our, our um, platform that we have with this machine has no magnets in it which is nice due to the fact that some of our coaches and some of our customers have the um, pacemakers and they can't have magnets. On top of my folder I have put my rubber mat and on top of my rubber mat one of my yellow or my orange I mean cutting plates. Now I'm going to run this through and as you can tell it's a little harder to run through than just with a flat die. Also it's a little harder because my plate, my cutting plate, is warped just a little bit because I've used it a lot. Set that aside. Now when I open it up you will see that I have all my leaves impressed on both of them. But now I want to put some color to this and here's where my pan pastels are going to come in. And my pan pastels on this one are my rich sorbet. And what I'm using is, I'm mean not rich sorbet, party pop, lemon drop. Now what I do when I get my kit of my uh, pan pastels, I label them. So I know this is lemon drop. I know this also is party pop, but it's candy apple. And I know this is Party Pop, but it's Citrus Cooler. And then we've had an addition to this particular family of Party Pop, and that one is our Limeade Splash. And a Limeade Splash does not come in the kit like I showed you, all right? It's a separate one now. It's been added, so you can get this separate. And what I'm using are our daubers. We have two sizes. We have a small and then the larger one and I'm using both of these and of course you can buy extra pads. Now what I do is I save my pads and I have a plastic case and I label my case so that when I'm done with something I can just put it back in where it goes. These are all from Party Pop up here at the top. We have four different uh, pan pastels. We have Party Pop, we have Rich Sorbet, we have Mother Nature, and we have Confectionery Days. And they are all on our catalog and they all are of course on our um, website. So now what I do is I leave them together for right now and now I'm going to go ahead and color them in. So I'm going to take my green, my limeade, put on some of my color and I'm going to come in here and there's really no right or wrong way to do in this one. Okay, I'm just going to put in my green where I want it. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is just very carefully lift up my corner a little bit and run a little bit of this inside. All right, and then lay it back down. Oh, let's put some orange over here. And the yellow. And then our candy apple. So what I'm simply trying to do, of course, is to add some of the fall colors 
depending on where you live in the country, it will depend on how many fall colors you have. In Florida, we don't have hardly any. In Michigan, we have a lot. So it's just going to depend. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this. And also how dark that you want to make them. Okay, so there are my two embossed, dry embossed pieces. So now what I'm going to do is simply pull my top layer off very carefully. Because remember, I've attached a glue dot. And then I'm going to turn it over and put my tape on the back. When I uh, emboss something like this in an embossing folder, I always do use the tape. Um, you can also, of course, use our craft glue, but um, I don't like to have to wait for it to dry. And I'm afraid that I may move it and I don't want it moved. So on this, this sort of thing, I always use um, our tape, our white liner. Now this one will go on the smallest of our pumpkin bread. And our pumpkin bread has just a very little tiny border on all four sides. One sixteenth of an inch, basically. Then I turn mine over and press it down so that I know I have it set well. Put my tape on the back of this one. Now I'm going to take this one and center it where it's white here because this is where I had it centered before. And as I do this, I want to make sure that I'm lining up my leaves because I can see them and you can line this up exact to where you need it. And there it is. So you can see how my leaf extends here. My orange part of my leaf is here. My red stem is right where it's supposed to be. My leaf here, the edges is right where they're supposed to be, so I'm good to go. So now this one, again, I will use my uh, tape now, somebody may be wondering, well, what in the world is pan pastels made out of? Well, pan pastels are a dry pigment ink. And so they will not lose their sh color. Um, when I do a card like this, a lot of times what I will do is take it before I uh, make it onto my final piece, and I will spray it with my hairspray just a little, because then that will for sure set my pan pastels so that they're not going to come off at all. Otherwise, they may come off just a little bit. And I'll show you how I do mine. Take my base card and now center my base card on here. Then once I have my base card on, what I do is I just take a little piece of paper towel and I simply rub up and down one time. And you can see I've got a little bit of it off, not much at all. It's now going to stay right there. So now I'm going to take my littlest piece of white. And on that one, I'm not only going to stamp my words, but I want to stamp some leaves. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp my words in black. And I want to get my words in the center of this. And because I want to put my leaves in different colors on the edges, 
I'm going to do this part first because then I know exactly where I can put my leaf. Okay, so now there are my words. Now what I'm going to do is I'm taking two of my inks. I'm taking candy apple and my citrus cooler. And what I'm going to do is ink up part of my stamp in one color and part in the other color. So I'm going to lay this on here the best I can. All right, so there's my candy apple. Now the other side is going to be citrus cooler. Okay. And then I'm just going to put part of my leaf on. And there it is. So now I'm going to do it again. This time getting a little more orange over so it doesn't have quite the break that one had. Putting it over here. Okay. Then I'm going to clean it off and do at the bottom just an orange. Right there. Turn it over. Do just an orange up here. Clean that off. And by the way, I'm using baby wipes. When I'm done at the end of a day using my stamps, then I can clean them with our Journey um, cleaner. But for right now, I'm just using a baby wipe. Okay, now again on this one, I'm going to half it in red and the other half in orange. Red. And orange. Clean it off this time, and I think in the other two corners, I'm just going to do red. And there are my words. So I've done my leaf in two-tone, two different colors. Okay, and I've done some of it in just the red. Now this will go in the center of my card here. And this one I am going to pop dot. And I am using a full pop dot this time in all four corners. And I'm doing that because of using my pan pastels. I want to make sure that I have a good, uh, whatever you call it, fit down so it's going to stay on there real well. And there it is. This one is now completed. On the inside, all right, I would put another piece of white, and then if you wanted to, you could take some of your leaves and stamp around the edge of that to give it a little bit of design, and then write your note or stamp some of your other words on the inside. But this makes a neat fall card. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. By my email, it is serif, S as in Sam, E-R-I-F-1, at AOL.com. It is my last name backwards. And if you would like to see something else in one of the videos, please leave it in a comment below, and I will get back with you. Have a great and blessed day.